Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to turn a tube into a bottle using a point fob. So let's start with a new file and just set up a geometry node which we are going to call bottle. Inside we will just set up a tube and we can give it a bit of definition already by defining a scale that is close to a bottle and turn it into polygons. So give it lots of segments and probably we are going to need even more later on. But I will start with 100 by 200 or maybe 150. We can change this later on. Now we go into a point vop. We can call this shape. And inside we should give plenty of space here and press spacebar H to see it all. And as usual we will work based on the position. And from there we can create basically everything we need. So most important for what we do is to get the bounding box, which is basically gradients from top to bottom, from left to right and from front to back. And we just need one component, so let's get that. Using get vector component, we can set this to the second component, which is Y. You can quickly visualize this if you plug this into CD, which is the color, you can see it's fading from bottom to top. All right, with Y you can cut this off again. And this is what we are going to feed into a ramp parameter, which we can just call shape. And it should be based on a spline. So now what would be an interesting way to get this done? I mean, we cannot directly apply this to position. We should uh, first of all make sure that we are multiplying certain components of the position with this shape. So how could we do that? We just say MALT. But um, again, we need to um, just feed this into a vector first. So what we want to influence is X and Z. So these are the two components we want to change. We want to keep the height. So Y will just be multiplied by one. And then we can apply this safely. So let's feed this into P. And then we can uh, just see how this works. So these, this is our curve. And as soon as I start to change it, you will see that we're now in full control of the radii of this cylinder. So we would like to maybe change the interpolation. We don't want this to be linear. And then we can just um, yeah, make this the shape we like. Maybe it's thick on two locations. If you want to have a rather spiky place, then you would um, just use two points here. But yeah, you're free to shape this the way you like. All right, let's not invest too much time. You can still define your own bottle later. And this works. Now what we need on top of this is further definition. So we would like to maybe define a cap. And um, what we also need is some kind of definition on the surface itself. So we would go in and now what we'd like to get is um, 
a radial information running across the surface. So what we can do here is there is a from polar node, excuse me, to polar node. And the U information will be run along this at least as soon as we uh, transform the overall positions. Let me have a look here. So um, a bit of transformation would help or we could simply swizzle some vectors. So because what we need actually is the X and Y components. So this is, keeps being X, Z is being brought into Y and Z is being Y now. So um, like um, Y is being Z now. So what we get by swizzling those vectors is a gradient that looks like this. It's starting with pure white and it's going down all the way to black. And this information we can use. We can also have a look here at the color information running from zero to one. And we need to um, multiply this by pi. So that way we can feed this into a sine function. So let's make sure to switch this to H expressions and saying dollar pi. And now we are ready to feed this into sine. And that way we get a smooth curve or a smooth uh, transition from dark to bright to dark again. And now if we are multiplying this constantly, we can give this a lot of stripes if you like. So when I say four, you will see I get one, two, three, four, especially when I set them to absolute, then you will see them in full glory. One, two, three, four. And chances are you don't want to have a fixed number of stripes, but you want to work with a parameter. So you would just replace this by a proper multiply node and say parameter call this stripes, stripes, set this to integer to get full values and a default of four and a minimum of one. So let's feed this in. And now if you go on top, you should be able to define the number of stripes here procedurally. All right, next, how would we um, kind of make these stripes only take place in certain areas. This again is rather simple. We just take the vertical bounding box component and create another ramp parameter to define the, I just call this definition because these are stripes or any other patterns. Uh, we just want a mask for this. We can also call this mask if you like. Maybe this makes more sense. And again, we want a spline ramp. And this is going to be multiplied with these stripes. So um, I just go up. We go into the mask, open this up. And again, we will just define two places where this plays a role. You can use B spline again. B spline doesn't go right through the points, but it's very, very soft. So I kind of like this in some situations, but feel free to play around with all other sorts of interpolation modes. And in order to visualize this better, we can feed this into um, CD as well for the time being. So you can tell a little better where our stripes will occur. So maybe something like this helps. We don't want to get the bottleneck. Maybe something like this. And in order to make this broader, we can open this up. Honestly, maybe you want to use a different interpolation mode. 
that way you save lots of points. All right, let's just multiply this. So we want to get our stripes combined with our mask. So you would feed both into a multiply, bring them to color, and that way you can see where we are about to push out our stripe shapes. And this can be done based on our current position using a displace along normal node where you can just bring in the current position and use the amount of this. So you can see now we have a drastic deformation and we can tame this by going to scale. And that way you can bring in some special definition here. Um, let's go up to make the influence a little larger. Or maybe um, let's do as suggested. You would just say, hey, I need a different interpolation here, starting maybe with uh, monotone cubic, which is using flat tangents and that way it's uh, going through the points as well. There we go and then you can give this a definition by yourself. When with two points you define that it's happen happening nowhere and then you would play around with the scale. All right, how can you um, make this sine wave a little um, more interesting because you don't want this to, to look that extreme. This looks more like a fruit at the moment. And the secret to this is a clamp node. So you can say it's all right that you go out, but there should be a stop somewhere, see that? So that way you can really define yourself how far it goes outside. And now the rest is a matter of your personal preference, hence a procedure model. So you can make this look good, but I don't want to waste your time with kind of playing around with these sliders all the time. If you need the file, just go to the Oddforce forums where you can download the bottle.hip file. Thank you for watching.